Google Translate. It's the best way to butcher a foreign language since those sketch shows from the late 1990s. Si costa para tos mi atroci a vale portos, scorchio. Since it launched, this tool has become an invaluable way for everyone to understand other people from other countries and hilarious videos where the lyrics don't make sense when they go back into their original language. Lit white snow on the mountain tonight, no visible legs. Now, as well as this video has aged, it does highlight some of the issues of Google Translate. Namely, that occasionally language models just translate words as literal, and they don't take into account context or local lingo. This, much like taking a shit in the woods in the middle of winter, is relatively harmless but not ideal. But what happens when it perpetuates sexism, racism, or any other number of isms that should have been left in the 90s? Scorchio. Yeah, we get it, Editor Simon. Let's look at why Google Translate is sexist, what we can do about it, and why it's more important than you think. Part one, the problem. For those of you who may not know, Google Translate is a popular translate tool created by Google. And if you did need that sentence, the rest of this video is gonna go over your head faster than Concord, so, I'd bow out now. It's used by millions of people around the world to translate text, web pages, and speech from one language to another. However, recent studies have shown that Google Translate, not unlike 90-year-old CEOs, have a significant gender bias problem. For example, a study from the University of Cambridge found that when translating from Turkish to English, Google Translate would use the pronoun he when referring to a doctor, but would use she when referring to a nurse. This is a clear example of gender bias, as it suggests that the developers of the language algorithm believe that doctors are more likely to be men and nurses are more likely to be women. But isn't that the truth anyway? Well, me in a hat, maybe if you're casting for roles in Call the Midwife. But these days, women can do everything as well as a man. Except oppress a gender. They're, they're pretty rubbish at that. I mean, we've never given them the chance, but I don't think they could handle it. Another study conducted by the University of Maryland found that when translating from English to Spanish, Google would often use the masculine form of words, even when the context clearly indicated the feminine should be used. And this sort of thing carries through multiple other languages. This suggests that the developers of the algorithm believe that the masculine form of the word is the default and the feminine version should be kept in the kitchen and only brought out on special occasions. These examples demonstrate Google Translate's gender bias is not just a theoretical problem, but a very real one that can have real world consequences. Oh, so now Google Translate needs gender training. How woke is this channel going? Well, me and a hat, software often gets retrained to improve its service, so I wouldn't call that woke. But also, yes. But to say Google Translate is sexist is actually shifting the blame away from what's actually to blame and onto something that can't defend itself. Part two, who is to blame? Great question, voiceover Simon. The blame game gets us nowhere, but let's look at how Google Translate was made. To make your own Google Translate, you're gonna need a large amount of text in different languages and a lawyer because Google will sue you if you use their name. The text is known as corpus and it's used to train the algorithm that power Google Translate. The corpus is composed of various types of text, such as books, websites, and articles, and it contains millions of words in different languages. Once the corpus has been gathered, you use fancy mathematical language models that only a select few can understand called statistical machine translation to analyze patterns and relationships between words and phrases. The algorithm learns how to translate by analyzing these patterns and relationships. Then, to make your algorithm think for itself, we use neural machine translation. This uses neural networks, which are basically computer programs modeled after the human brain. I mean, it would need to be modeled after the human brain. Humans made it, so the human brain would have to come first. They're able to learn and adapt to new data. The neural networks are trained on the corpus and they learn by translating and analyzing patterns and relationships between words and phrases in different languages. Once all of this is done, you have an algorithm that can translate between languages. Then you put the cherry on the top in the form of active learning code, which allows the algorithm to learn from the corrections made by human translators. Then you can go to the Winchester, have a nice cold pint and wait for all of this to blow over. What? Oh, um, nothing. The problem is, if just one too many sexist comments make it into the mix, the entire algorithm will lean that way. That's right, it's time for another on the nose analogy. Think of it like this. If you're baking a cake and a drop of poo gets into the batter, when you take the cake out of the oven, the poo will still be in there, somewhere.
And although it's not the entire cake, it's enough of the recipe that maybe we should go back and review it. Now given algorithms can't yet use books or articles from the future to train itself, it'll have to use a data set from the past. And fun fact about the past, we were more sexist, racist, and had a lot more conscious biases that will put poop in our batter. Part three. So what can we do about it? Not a lot. Well, we can't do anything. Google. Google can do something. Language learning models are trained on data and articles that exist in the world. So if Google Translate is sexist, it's only because the data model that it was trained on is sexist. And as they say, the apple doesn't fall far from the data set that it was coded on tree. I did not think about that sentence before I started it. Google Translate amplifies the biases of the past rather than focusing on the way the language has changed. Why should I care? Well, me and a hat, you should care because although it doesn't impact you directly and congratulations again on hitting the royal flush of privileges, it could impact you in the future and it does impact people right now. If the bias in something as seemingly inconsequential as a translation tool isn't called out, it probably won't be called out when it's something much more serious like an AI tool for your jobs or policing or housing or more. Increasingly, the world is using AI to automate things, and if we use bad code, or in this case, we give bad code bad data, it'll only oppress or harm people who have been harmed in the past once again. It's a process that developers call garbage in, garbage out, so they know it's a potential thing. And if you are one of the developers at Google Translate and you've made it this far, I've got a little gift for you. My issue's not with you, no, it is plain to see. It is the data set that you choose that I've got to be with. Algebra at the zoo, which is the perfect lunch snack. You're doing your best, and yes, I get that, but... Oh, no.